Hello and a big welcome back to all my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, what's wrong with you? Press the button. Right, today I want to talk about creating a computer emulation or an emulator. Now I've never written an emulator before and so I decided I was going to do one, uh, but I needed a computer to do it with. Now I could have done an emulation of an existing CPU and machine, but they're really complicated and I didn't want to start with something really complicated. I wanted to do something as easy as possible. So I decided I would design my own fictional computer um, and that it would have, you know, my instruction set, it would do what I wanted and it would be as simple as I could make it. So that's what I have here. Now I've got, I've decided that the CPU would just be a, an 8-bit CPU with four registers or um, zero actually uh, through R3, um, a stack pointer and a program counter. I decided to have a 16-bit address bus. I initially thought about having eight, but then when I got to the point of looking at opcodes, I just couldn't be bothered to do the two-step thing, so I decided 16-bit address would be better, especially for memory addressing and things, and then just an eight-bit data bus. Now, I decided that since I've got a 16-bit register that I could have more a bit more memory, and so I decided to have uh, EEPROM and three banks of RAM, basically chips. Now, this I might change. I don't actually use the EEPROM as, I, as, it, as this has evolved. I kind of don't have it, but I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. Uh, I'm just going with it. And I thought initially that what I would do is on startup, it would initialize the hardware, which there isn't any, load the boot code and instructions from the EEPROM, and then execute the EEPROM code and simulate a hard drive as a folder on the host machine. Well, I tell you, lots of things have changed, and uh, a spoiler alert, things are not going to plan. Um, but I'll talk more about that later uh, toward the end of the video. Uh, and this is probably going to be a series of videos. I'm not going to be able to cover everything in this one video. Um, and I haven't actually completed the writing of the emulator yet. So the boot sequence isn't like that. I, I decided to make some changes, which I'll show you later. Um, and then the storage was basically, I decided that the hard drive would just be a folder on my host machine and then I would use that as the hard drive. And I was going to have a serial interface to talk to the computer. That I decided against, it's just too complicated. Um, but again, I'll get to that in a minute. And then I decided on my instruction set, now because I've I'm using four bits. I've only got 16 instructions. So what I went with was load, immediate load, store, add, a subtract, a jump, branch if equal, branch if not equal, compare, logical and or XOR, uh, shift left, shift right, a pop and a push. Now these are still up in the air. There's a couple I wish that I could have put in here. but. I'm restricted to 16. So the simplicity also creates some restrictions. And so I've had to do some workarounds here. Now I also got some flags, zero flags, overflow and carry flag. Um, and that's basically it. Um, and what I had to do was use the jump statement to try and end programs. So, um, or basically reset the computer to look for another program. This is quite complicated and it's not the best way to do it. Um, but there you go. Now using this instruction set, I wrote some machine code to um, 
do what I want. Now this bit is just the load immediate, the number 32 into register zero. This loads 32, immediate load into register one. This is an add instruction, and this is a jump instruction to the end of the memory space, which should halt the program counter. So that's the plan. Um, this was the sample program that I'm going to use to try and get to the point where it would, um, you know, I can use this as a test and do what I want with it. Now, in order to change this into a binary, I wrote a Python script that basically just reads the text file in and outputs it as a binary file that I can use to read into my emulator. So that is my test case. It's basically just these four simple instructions uh, processed into a binary so that I can read it. Now, I created a framework for my emulator but before I go into that, let me just tell you that I'm not sponsored by anybody and I don't have a Patreon account or any of that. But what would really help me is if you had a look at my books and purchase some books from me. Now, I don't sell the books directly on my website, but if you like the looks of effective note taking, for example, you can click the link and it tells you where it's available on Amazon or Kobo. And then that link will take you to where you can purchase the book online. There's many books on my website, and not just mine. Uh, I've got a few other authors who have written some books and some Sudoku books uh, and cryptograms and all kinds of other stuff that are available in the nonfiction. Uh, one you might like, which is beer pairing. So pairing beer with food, just like people do with wine. Uh, so this is an interesting book, uh, especially since I like beer. Uh, so I, I was really keen to read this uh, when it came out. And again, if you click it, it will tell you where you can get it. You can get Smashwords, Amazon, Kobo, etc. So... Please have a look at my website. Please, uh, if you're interested in the book, buy the books. It's a win-win for me uh, and you because you get a book and I get some uh, money to help me continue doing what I do. Uh, so please have a look at my books. Right, now that our sponsorship bit is done, let's go back to the emulator. Now what I did was I created this basic framework that I'm going to use for my emulator. And I've shown you this, but this has evolved many times in the last two days that I've worked on it. I'm now on version six, I think. So when I'm doing a major rewrite of this, I basically save a copy and then change it to a new version. And then I gut it and change it and modify it and mutilate it. You know, and this is just major rework. So I've done sort of five major reworks of this since I initially started it. But the basic framework is still in existence. Um, I set up the memory structures. I set up the selection of the memory. I have created the CPUs. Um, and... I made some changes. So for example, I've made a couple of these registers to be 16-bit registers rather than 8-bit registers. Uh, the PC register, the program counter, mainly because I, I didn't want to keep having to do two cycle fetch and execute. So I've just made this 16 bits and it reads the instructions straight in and it does each one in one cycle. Now in hardware, that's probably not as easily done, but in software I can just make these changes as I please. Then I initialize the flags. <coughs> and then I've basically defined 
uh, some functions that I'm going to use to read memory, write memory, load programs, uh, execute instructions. This is the main one, the fetch, fetch and execute um, cycle. Uh, the run, the emulator, and then uh, a class for the CPU, and a class for the memory, and a class for the command line interface. Now, these have basically more or less been binned off in later versions. I only use the emulator class that does just about everything. I don't really worry about the whole memory bank switching thing. That was just too complicated. So these are some of the things that will have been gutted out and changed. And then the command line interface. Now what I decided to do was to actually rather than initialize into a boot prompt and then write a basic program or whatever, I've just created a command line interface that the emulator goes into and I can just do things directly within the command line interface without having a ser to write serial ports, uh, programs to write boot EPROMs and all of that. Now remember, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible in order to learn how to do an emulator. I'm not uh, trying to emulate a real computer, so I don't need to, you know, emulate the EEPROM bootload and all of that that a, a sort of an 8088 or a, or a MK63 um, or a 63K or, a, you know, any of the, the, the normal CPUs would use. So I'm doing this myself. So um, when it became too complicated, I changed it around to make it a bit simpler for me because the purpose here is not to have a, a realistic CPU. The purpose here is to learn how to write an emulator. And even if I fail to do this, and I, as it stands at the moment, it looks like I might fail, I'm still learned a lot about emulators and how they work and how you write one. So although I might fail in this, I will eventually be able to do it or at least know enough to do it um, and so that's where I stand at the moment. Um, so the command line interface starts up and it gives me some prompts and initially I thought oh, I want to be able to see the memory, I want to be able to see the registers, system info, date, time, installation, etc. Load in order to load that file, this binary that I had before and to be able to change directories and, you know, move around within the directory structure and I'm using Unix commands and then a shutdown. Now, um, and then some placeholders for, you know, showing the registers, showing the um, system info, etc., etc., And then a basic main to start it up. Now, that's the framework in a nutshell, but uh, it has evolved immensely, and I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'll cover it in the, in the next video, and I'll, in the next video, we'll talk about how the framework expanded and the changes that had to happen. Uh, some issues with my choice of using Python to do this, because it's caused me some issues um, which I'll talk about in the next video um, but it's a good choice for rapidly prototyping things but it wasn't such a good choice for the sort of low-level stuff that you kind of have to do in a, in, a, in, a, in a CPU. There were a number of issues around my computer design one of which I mentioned earlier which was having to increase the size of the registers um, it, the problems were around the EPROM and the bootloading and the memory banks and all of that. And so there was decisions that were made to change or call that or simplify it or whatever. And I'll get into more detail in that in the next video. So if you like these sort of videos, uh, please like and subscribe and share them with people who you think might be interested. Uh, and uh, I will get back to my emulator and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.